how many calories do I need to cut to lose weight? About 15 to 20%. Look at the chart on the screen and find where you land for your maintenance calories. Write this number down, okay? Because we're gonna use this number to calculate weight loss calories, as again, this chart on the screen is going to be for maintenance calories that are recommended on health.gov. Now granted, I wouldn't become super fixated on this number as these numbers, they're good estimates on where someone your gender, age, and activity level would be, but these numbers don't take into consideration someone's height. So according to health.gov's website with their chart, they're basically insinuating that someone, let's say, who's a female that's 37 and moderately active, whether she's five foot two inches tall or six foot two inches tall, she'd be eating, you know, those kind of calories. I don't think so. I do think that our height does play a role. And in general, it's really hard to calculate the exact amount of calories someone needs. Plus, on top of that, the quality of the calories we consume do matter in terms of how our body composition is going to appear. Because if I were to eat 2000 calories of donuts every day for a year, or 2000 calories of eggs every day for a year, not only on the donut diet, am I going to have more dandruff? toenail fungus. I'm gonna get sick more often throughout the year, have a stuffy nose, sore throat, irritability. But also, I'm going to look differently eating 2,000 calories of donuts every day for a year versus the 2,000 calories of eggs every day. One of the reasons for this is that eggs have protein in them, and protein has a higher thermic effect of food in comparison to fats and carbs. And what that means, it's just a fancy way of saying, our body uses more calories to break down and digest the protein than it does with fats and carbs. So between the donuts and the eggs, if I have 2000 calories of both, my body will actually burn more calories, breaking down and metabolizing the protein in the eggs. But on top of that, eggs have loads of vitamins and minerals in them. So when I eat this egg, my body sucks up all the vitamins and minerals. It uses the vitamin A for my vision. It uses the vitamin D to boost my immune system and keep me from getting sick. My body uses the choline to help with my hair. So when I have the egg, my body is sucking up all these nutrients. Whereas with the donut, eh, doesn't have very many. So if I eat the donut, it kind of just sits around my waistline waiting to be used. So this is just one example of how all calories aren't created equally and the quality of the calories do matter in terms of not only how we feel, but also how we look. So if someone's currently eating more processed foods, pizzas, beer, brownie, cookies, and they're trying to lose weight, they might not have to cut their calories at all. You could forget about what I said, about 15 to 20%. If someone's eating more processed foods, they may just be able to switch the kinds of calories that they're consuming and lose weight without even cutting calories. I've seen this time and time again with clients, but also even with myself, where I was eating 2000 calories of junky junk, and then I just started having 2000 calories of real whole single ingredient foods, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, fruits, nuts, veggies, and I lost weight. So this should be really good news for people if they're eating more processed foods, let's say crackers, and cutting my calories. Instead, I would just switch those crackers for carrot sticks. But better yet, instead of the carrot sticks, I would opt for more things like beef jerky or anything with more protein in it. Because again, having more protein can help our bodies burn and use more calories. And most people are protein deficient. So I would opt for things that do have more protein in them, whether that be having more cheese, eggs, or I've seen these cheese whisps. So if people like to have like the crunch, instead of having a cracker, I would opt for these cheese whisps whose only ingredient is cheese. I know eating whole foods sounds lame, but I promise you, you. It is delicious and nothing is more enjoyable than feeling good, looking great, sleeping good, having lots of energy. Okay, but now let's say you're like, Lily, I've been eating whole foods and I still haven't lost all the weight I'd like to lose yet. How many calories should I cut? And that's where my short answer is 15 to 20% depending on how many calories someone's consuming currently. If someone is currently eating 3000 calories a day on average or more, then I would multiply that number by 0.15 or 15% to see how many calories to cut. If someone is currently eating 3000 calories or less on average a day, then I would multiply that number by 0.2 or 20% to see how many calories I should cut. For example, if I were eating 3,500 calories currently, multiply that times 0.15, that's 525 less calories I'd be eating, so around 3,000 calories a day to lose weight. If I were currently eating 2,000 calories, then multiply that by 0.2, that's 400 less calories I'd be having, so I'd eat around 1,600 calories a day to lose weight. 
Hold up, hold your horses, eh? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is going to be a very telling sign on whether or not someone should actually be cutting their calories right now or not. If we go back to the recommended maintenance calories chart found on health.gov, if you're currently eating maintenance calories or greater than what's on the chart, congratulations, you have been cleared. For takeoff, go ahead and start losing weight. Multiply by 0.15 or 0.2 and cut the calories. If you're below maintenance calories and you're currently not losing weight, mm, I would not further cut my calories. I'm gonna run through examples for both kinds of people, the one who can currently be in that spot to lose weight and the one who, you know, for me, I would be working on boosting my metabolism first before I then go to weight loss mode. A couple things I should have mentioned, one being that I like keeping my life simple. And if anyone's watching this right now saying, this seems very complicated, that I've got to track and I've got to do all this math and count my calories, and I just want to do things more simply for weight loss, then I would just eat meat. I'd eat as much meat until I'm comfortably full. Eventually, that person's still gonna probably have to come back to this video as they may hit a weight loss plateau. Again, I don't track my macros, but I'm at my goal weight. I have the energy I'm looking for. And if right now you're not reaching your goals and you're not losing weight, then it may be advantageous to track for just one week. I would take how many calories I'm currently eating each day. Maybe one day I'm at 2,000, one day 1,000, one day 1,200, one day 1,400. I would take my week's average and see where I'm at. And then I'd watch also this video where it talks about how to track what I'm looking for and how to do the whole process of tracking. I'll link that video in the description as well. The second thing I wanted to mention is that food is energy. When we eat food, it gives our bodies what it needs to talk, walk, function, do what it's gotta do. And when we eat more food, more energy than our body needs, we store the extra food as fat around our bodies. Our body saves the extra energy, the stored energy, for later use until our body needs the energy. So some people are like, I need to lose this extra fat. Meanwhile, I'm over here saying, hey, that's just extra stored energy. Using me as an example, I'm a female who's 27 and moderately active. This is the range of calories recommended for me to maintain my weight. However, I currently eat more calories than what's recommended and I'm maintaining my weight, which is really great. I believe, and many other people in the health and nutrition space believe, that the more calories and food someone's able to consume and maintain their weight, the healthier the individual. So in general, the maintenance numbers on the chart, if you can do that and maintain your weight, that's great. But if you can eat even more and still maintain your weight, even more fantastic. But now let's talk about how to lose weight. Let's run through two examples, one where someone's currently eating more than the maintenance calories on the chart, and one where someone's currently eating less than the maintenance calories on the chart and they're not losing weight. According to this chart, my maintenance calories would be around 2100. But let's say I'm currently eating around 2700 calories a day, on average, of junk food. Step one, I would replace the 2700 calories of junk food with 2700 calories of real whole food. My body composition will change, I'll likely lose some weight, but then let's say I hit a weight loss plateau. What I consider a weight loss plateau is hovering around the same weight and the scale number's not budging for three weeks. So let's say I'm now having my 2,700 calories of real whole food and I've lost some weight, but I haven't lost all of the weight I'd like to lose yet. I hit a weight loss plateau, so then I would multiply my 2,700 times 0.2 or 0.15 if someone's greater than 3,000 calories. My 2,700 times 0.2 is 540. So now I'd aim to eat around 2,160. I mean, the number doesn't have to be exact, but like a ballpark area, I'd eat less. I'd eat around 2,100 calories a day to see weight loss. Because if you think about it, if we're having 540 less calories a day times seven days in a week, that's 3,780 less calories over the course of a week. I basically just fasted for a day and a half that week. You betcha, I would definitely be losing weight. Let's say I do this for a couple of months, lose weight, but eventually my body's gonna get smart and say, hey, I think they're always gonna eat 2,100 calories a day and my body's going to adapt to eating that amount of fuel where now I hit a weight loss plateau again. So I'd take that 2160 times 0.2, that's 430 less calories I'd be eating from the 2160. So now we're roughly at 1700 and I do that and see more weight loss. Eventually my body will get smart again and it will say, hey, I think she's always given me this amount of food, therefore I need to adapt and learn how to use just this amount of food and my metabolism will slow down and I'll hit that weight loss plateau again. 
but at this point, I would not further cut my calories because we are now below the maintenance level calories and we're not losing weight. This is a sign my metabolism is starting to really slow down and it's time to go through, you know, what the bodybuilders call a refeed or a bulk or a reverse diet. They all mean the same thing or what I call it, boosting my metabolism phase. So this is where if you were in this category of people, the ones who could use some boosty boosty because we're below the maintenance calories already and we're not losing weight, this is what I would do. Firstly, here's the deal. Our bodies, their goal is to keep us alive. Our bodies have no idea that right down the street, we've got a grocery store. For all our bodies know, you are out in the middle of a deserted island and you have to hunt and find food and your body doesn't know the next time it's going to eat. Again, our body's goal is to keep us alive. And so when we give it calories, if we give it very little calories, it's going to use those calories so strategically to do the most essential things for us to not die. It's gonna put it towards pumping our heart circulating blood throughout, have our organs function, but if we've been so calorie deprived, our body doesn't have the additional calories to do things like grow our hair. Our body uses calories to blink. So you might find that if you eat less calories, you actually blink less because your body just doesn't have the extra calories to be able to devote it towards blinking our eyes. Our bodies like to maintain 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we don't give it enough calories, we might feel more cold throughout the day because our body doesn't have the calories it needs to generate heat. Fellas, if we are so calorie deprived, our body doesn't have the additional calories to spare towards testosterone. So we might be waking up in the morning, not as sharp as we could be, okay? Ladies, if we're so calorie deprived, we might start skipping a menstrual cycle because our bodies can't have a baby right now. We don't even have enough calories to feed ourselves, let alone our body have enough calories to develop someone else. So if we're currently under maintenance calories and we're not losing weight, then we've got two options. Option one, we can cut our calories even further to see weight loss, but we'd also have less vitamins, less minerals, less energy, less thyroid function, less ability to balance hormones, less hair growth, etc. Or option two, we can take what we're currently eating and slowly increase up to a healthier amount of calories, our maintenance calories, do that for a period of time, give our bodies a break, and then bring it back down to see weight loss. Pick option two. I'm gonna further explain how to do this. It's called a reverse diet, and I'm going to explain how to do it without gaining weight. But first, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. And today's video is sponsored by Bond Charge, which is a company whose products I use every day in some shape or form, whether that be through their blue light blocking glasses, sauna blanket, massage gun, or more uniquely, their red light face mask, which yes, I look like Darth Vader when I'm wearing it. I am the father. But we'll see who's laughing when I've got less wrinkles, okay? Some of you guys have been commenting that I look younger and that my skin's been more clear and glowy. It's the mask. If your goal is to have younger looking skin, less fine lines and wrinkles, less blemishes, scars, redness in the face, more radiant skin, then just 10 minutes a day is really all you need. I mean, y'all should know by now I'm a penny pincher. And so I could buy lotions and creams to put on my face, but with those things, I have to buy them every single month. Whereas with this, it's a one-time purchase. I can recharge it and then I can use it forever. And it works great. Rice, mm. what do you think about this? <laughs> there will be a link in the description to the mask and you can use discount code Lily for 15% off your order. All right, so this is how I'd approach a reverse diet. Again, let's say my maintenance calories are around 2,100, but I've been doing 1,700 and I'm not losing weight. What I'm gonna do for the next two weeks, I'm going to have around 1,800 calories a day. Personally, I don't like tracking calories. I don't like tracking my food. And so for me, what I do instead is I just say, okay, I'm gonna take what I'm currently eating and add a little bit more of something something. Maybe that means I'm having one more tablespoon of butter every day for two weeks. Or maybe I'm gonna take what I'm currently eating and I'm going to add one more egg to my day every day for two weeks. Or maybe I'm gonna add two more ounces of beef, one apple. I'm just gonna add a little bit of something something to what I've currently been doing. After the two weeks of doing around 1800-ish every day, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but after doing around 1800 for two weeks, I'm now going to add another little something something to bump me up to more like 1900 every single day for two weeks. After the two weeks, I'm gonna do 2000 calories every single day for two weeks. 
after the two weeks, I'm gonna go up to 2100. I'm a visual learner, so I'm going to put on the screen what I'm talking about. I would not be doing this image where I'm adding 100 calories every single day. Two main reasons why I want to slowly increase the calories. One being that I'm likely not very hungry to just increase my calories so drastically overnight. I'm gonna feel very stuffed and full and my tummy's gonna hurt and I'm not gonna be able to sleep at night because I'm too full and stuffed. But if I gradually increase it, my body's gonna, you know, if I had one egg today extra, that's not that big of a deal, my body's slowly gonna get used to having that amount of food. But the other reason I wanna increase slowly is because I don't wanna gain my weight back. If I drastically increase my calories, I'm going to likely gain weight. When we're trying to lose weight, we quickly take the calories away. We go from the 21 to the 1700 overnight. We start having 400 less calories a day times seven days in a week. That's 2800 less calories we're having in a week. We're gonna see weight loss. But when we're bringing the calories back in, we do it very gradually. We're having 100 more calories a day times seven days in a week. That's 700 more calories we're gonna be having. We slowly bring the calories back in to not gain weight, but when we're trying to lose weight, we quickly take the calories away to shock the body, make the body say, oh snap, this is why we saved this extra fat and adipose tissue. We saved it in the event that we weren't gonna get food. Now I'm gonna use this extra fat to help me get through the day, pump my heart, circulate my blood, have my organs function. And since I had to use this backup fat, now I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna lose it and I'm gonna lose weight. So this is where I only stay in the weight lossy phase as long as I'm losing weight, but until I hit the weight loss plateau, until my weight has roughly been the same for three weeks, then that's a signal to me, my metabolism slowing down, I've got to now slowly increase my calories back up to maintenance before I can cut again. Though how long do we want to be eating maintenance before we can cut? The longer you can continue to eat more maintenance calories, the better, because it gives more time for the body to adapt to eating that higher number. Personally, I'd stay in maintenance mode for at least 60 days, if not longer, if you can push it off more. I know we wanna lose weight, and so it's like, how long do I have to stay in maintenance before I can cut and lose weight again? And one of the things I talk about with my coaching clients is they're in maintenance mode and they're like, okay, Lily, it's been a week, when can I cut my calories and I say let's focus on how you feel right now at maintenance you probably are gonna feel better than when you're in cutting phase eating less calories less vitamins and minerals and so they'll tell me Lily I feel better in maintenance mode I have more energy I have less headaches I'm sleeping better so when in maintenance mode I would focus really on how you feel since obviously you know you're not gonna look very different if you are in maintenance also, I suggest doing like 50 to 100-ish calories when increasing slowly to not gain weight. However, some people are currently eating like 800 calories a day. And so for them to slowly increase at that pace is gonna take them several months to get up to maintenance calories. Firstly, some people, as they slowly increase their food intake, do continue to lose weight. Because if you think about it, when the body is in a stressed state, when it's in survival mode, it's not getting in enough calories, it holds on to the extra adipose tissue and fat because it's like, okay, I'm gonna store this as backup just in case I get zero calories or I don't eat in a day. I'm gonna hold on to this extra fat as backup just in case I don't eat and I'm gonna die. But then as people slowly increase their food intake, their body starts to relax more and say, hey, okay, I don't have to save this extra backup anymore. I know I'm gonna be fed. I don't have to worry about holding onto it just in case I don't eat food. So for most people, when they slowly increase their food intake, they'll maintain their weight. But for some people, they actually lose weight as they slowly increase because their body's feeling more safe and more comfortable. And it's like, ooh, yeah, let's shed the pounds because I'm not in survival mode. The other thing is that I'm recommending like 50 to 100-ish calories added on for two weeks, which is a very slow way of boosting calories because I don't want people coming back to me and saying, hey, Lily, I gained weight. So I do a very modest approach to adding in calories. However, for some people, like I said, if they're eating 800 calories and they're like, what? I gotta go all the way up to 2100, that's going to take me several months, months to get up there to 2100 before I can cut and lose weight. So I have some clients who they're like, Lily, I'm just gonna take what I'm currently eating and jump all the way up to my maintenance and I'm just gonna start eating maintenance overnight. And if I gain some weight, I gain some weight, but I'd rather just rip it off like a Band-Aid so then I can eat my maintenance calories for about, you know, 60 days or more before I can cut and lose weight. 
And I am always surprised when people do that and they increase so quickly. They come back to me and they're like, Lily, I only gained like one or two pounds, so it was totally worth it because now I can go into weight loss mode and it didn't take me several months to get up to maintenance. So however you wanna approach it, you can do it quickly, you can do it slowly, whatever you wanna do, do your thing. If you've got to this point and you're like, okay, Lily, it looks like I'm the person who needs to slowly start increasing my food, but what foods do I add in? I'd watch this video here and see if you can figure out what kind of food would be the food you should add in, but I can't kind of blanket statement say what food everybody should be adding in because it's gonna depend on what someone's currently eating. But otherwise I do offer one-on-one -on -one calls and I take and look at what you're eating and then I say, okay, for the next two weeks, add this in. For the next two weeks after that, add this in. And I'll give you a plan on how to approach this reverse diet. There's a link in the description to my coaching services. If that interests you, don't be silly. Subscribe to Lily and I'll see you in the next one.